Every so often I get asked what equipment do I use for streaming and recording? Why do I use what I use? Would I use something else? Where do I want to go? And with everything going virtual nowadays, I get asked this more and more often. So I decided to make a video about it. Welcome back to Developer's Garage. I'm your host, Ryan Overton. And today we're going to be talking about my streaming setup and what I use for streaming videos and recording. More specifically, we're going to look at the technology that I use, not the software. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know. That way I can know that maybe I should do a part two where we talk about the software I'm using. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you know the next time I drop a new video. Now before we begin talking about my setup, I want to talk a little bit about what you really need to maybe start streaming or recording videos. And you might be surprised, you probably already have it. You only need a couple things. Well, three things. A computer, a webcam, and a microphone. And that's it. You're ready to go. Now, I would recommend trying this approach first, using that minimal setup. That way, you don't go out and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on new equipment and everything, only to get into it and find out, this really isn't for me. So my first streaming setup was a budget setup. It was what I had lying around. It was a laptop I had. This is it. This is what uh, the machine I started streaming with, a Microsoft Service Book Generation 1. Now it did have the power base to give it a little bit more boost. It was an i7 with, I think, honestly, I think it only had 8, meg, eight gig of RAM. Meg. What decade is this? Um, it may have 16. You don't need to go out and buy a fancy piece of hardware. Just use what you got. This is your first stream, your first recording, first video. Try it out. Make sure you like it. The next thing I had was I I, I did convince myself I needed a camera. Um, so I actually ordered a Logitech C920, which is kind of the staple that you'll see a lot of streamers use. And unfortunately, there a lot of them are out of stock right now, thanks to our social distancing pandemic we have going on right now but they will come back so in the meantime don't go buy a high dollar camera just yet use the camera on your laptop there's nothing wrong with it it'll shoot just fine what you need it may not be great video but it'll get you over that first hurdle next is the audio I used I used a Logitech headset that had a boom arm on it like that one and it works. I was actually using it for work and I, I used, again, I used what I had. So don't be afraid to use what you got. St get yourself to a starting place and move, move forward. The next thing, you gotta have an internet upload speed of about three megabits per second if you're streaming. If you're recording videos, you don't need that. You just need to be able to record the video, right? Now, as a developer, I put my machine under a lot of stress most of the times, especially when I'm developing software, I tend to, to send that CPU skyrocketing. That's the worst thing you can have for recording videos or streaming, um, especially streaming. You'll start dropping frames. And what that means is the people watching it are going to start seeing buffering. Think of that. Think of when you see buffering, skips and jumps, depending on how you have things, have things set up in your broadcasting software. So, I ended up having to say, you know what, I, I need something else. Um, and lucky enough for me, I had a second computer. Um, I had a work computer and my employer was just fine with me using it in the off hours for my, my streaming. And so what I ended up doing was, was a simple setup. I had one machine is dedicated to streaming and the other one for my development. And I used remote desktop. And that's for a difference, that's for a different video on how I got that set up and running, but you can do it. So I was using two PCs. It was working great. The other thing I discovered, and if you want to get into streaming and recording, use hard lines for your network. Um, it will work over Wi-Fi, but you're gonna have a much better experience, much better chance of things not failing on you. Um, I actually ran 50 foot ethernet cables from my machines to the router for streaming purposes only. It was a hack but it worked um, in my new setups I actually moved the router a little closer to my my workstation so I don't have to worry about that so I set myself a goal I started creating a list of where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do with my stream the first thing was I wanted to upgrade my audio 
I wanted a new mic. For my first audio upgrade, I upgraded my microphone to a Blue Yeti. It's a USB mic. Right there you can see the USB connection. But it's also a condenser mic with the various cardio padding, patterns, meaning I can set it to where it's only going to pick up my voice from the front, or it'll pick up the voice from the front and the back, so if I'm in like a podcasting scenario, um, or it'll pick up everything around it. So I have that range of adjustment. Um, typically you set it right here, so it picks up right around in here, so if you start moving around, as you might tell my, my microphone here, I might get soft, loud, or whatever, um, it's going to be a more consistent volume. And so that was nice. It was easy. I, it was a plug and go kind of thing, which as a new streamer, it's what I needed. I am not an audiophile or an audio expert, so the ease of things makes it simpler for me to justify the purchase. I think it will for you too. Next, I want to upgrade to a green screen. I had been using a just a regular mic and I had a little box around my video just for looks and appeal um, in my desktop, but I'd seen a lot of streams start with these floating people on top of their screen, which I was like, that's very cool. How does that work? Well, that's a green screen. Um, I'm using one here. Uh, you can't see it. That's why I look like I'm in a garage, but I'm not. There's a caveat with that. So you don't just need a green screen. You can get one, but you need a few more things to go with it. So when we start talking about green screens, we, we also need to talk about lighting. And lighting is, is key to make a green screen work. Some of my early videos, I had a terrible time lighting. I had, I had a great set that I'd found that was actually recommended, some LED lights that would shine a green light onto a green screen. Now, that was mind-blowing for me, actually. Um, it was like, I never thought of that. Go ahead and help flatten out that green so your, your color key, your chroma key, can basically remove that color. Um, and you don't have to make it really fuzzy to where you get a fuzzy shape around. Um, my early streams, you'll see a lot of um, graininess in certain areas, and that's the lighting failures. Um, lighting is, is hard. Um, it's not easy, and I'm not going to make it sound easy. But once you get it, once you get it where you want it, don't move it. Um, that was my thing, um, and unfortunately I had to move it because I was basically surrounded by all my equipment, and I couldn't couldn't get out of my setup and go do other things without tearing it down. So I tried to mark points and make things, um, but the other thing was I had another, I had a window um, with a set of blinds on it. it. looked nice, but it let in still enough light to mess up my green screen. So, so what I do now is I actually have a sheet that covers the window in my room. It's a dark sheet, so it doesn't let in a whole lot of light and helps me even this green screen out even more because I have a lot more control of all the ambient light in the room. And that's what you're going to need for a green screen. The other thing was I had my camera mounted on top of my monitor, which, you know, this sounds great, except when you have a nice big monitor. Um, like I've got, I have a 27-inch iInk. No, I have a 27-inch AOC. Um, and I had it right on top. And when you're, re when you're streaming or recording, recording actually it's easy because you're looking right at the camera. Um, when you're streaming though, you're looking at the screen. So you want to give it a little, little better view rather than the top of your head. And if you're looking at the top of my head, eh, you're going to see a, a thinning hairline. So not the best to look at. So I wanted to adjust that. Um, I found this little device here. It's a inexpensive little arm. It also provides a face light. So as I started messing with lighting and all these other things, um, I needed something to brighten up my face because the crisper you can make your subject uh, the better it's going to be to be able to filter out of the background so otherwise you're going to start blending in and stuff like that not a, not a good experience um, so light up that face give it a more natural color that's the other thing this light actually has different tones you can set depending on your complexion so don't forget to mute your other audio devices when you're recording or streaming it can just ruin the mood so I knew I wanted to get better. I knew I wanted to do more. Um, and I set forth and went out and created a, a spreadsheet of all the equipment that I wanted. I knew I wanted to have guests. I knew I wanted to be able to take my equipment when I travel and do recordings and videos there and stream from there. Um, I've been told hotel Wi-Fi is finicky, um, and it is. I've actually done some 
video chats, video conferences from hotel rooms, and yeah, it's not the best. But for a recording setup, I could think it could work well. But I used two PCs that needed a network to talk. That doesn't work when you're in a hotel room. Along my journey, I was able to pick up a couple more little pieces of equipment that really helped my stream kind of smooth out the flow. Um, everything I've got, the other pieces we're going to talk about here, you can actually do with the software, but I, I wanted to, this made it better. It made it flow better. Um, I'm still not quite the best at it. I need to do a little bit more of it, a little more practice, but not, let, let's get to what I'm actually talking about here. The Elgato Stream Deck, 15 key. So what the Elgato Stream Deck is, it's a physical hardware device that allows me to do different actions on my stream or on my PC. So while this is geared towards streamers to be able to do things like change scenes, change lighting, change sounds, play sounds, play music, anything you can think of, it can also do other things like launch programs. Um, you can actually use it for a different setup. So if my kids came up and said, hey, dad, I want to use your computer, I could hit a button and it would basically close programs and open new ones. Um, it, it's a macro system, so you can do whatever you want. And they even have the ability to make one button do multiple actions. So it's a great little setup and I, I love it. I end up having two and believe it or not, I use them both. They come in handy. I have one dedicated for um, changing scenes for basically managing the look of my stream, controls the lights, controls the scenes I'm on, um, and then I have another one for playing sounds. Um, it's amazing how many different sound effects you can come up with, and organizing them can be kind of hard. And if you've got your own tips, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear them and see what cool things you all are doing with the equipment you have. There's a couple more changes I made software related to make my stream better. Um, it affected the hardware because the software I was using chewed up a lot of CPU. And like we talked about earlier, CPU, high CPU rates is going to drop frames, which means your stream's going to lag behind, um, which means there's going to be jumpiness for people watching. But what it can also do, it can also delay your chat. So when people type something in, it could be, you know, a couple seconds to 30 to, I, I think I had it a couple minutes at one time. Um, and the only thing, really, the way I found to fix that was to stop the stream and restart it. So you don't want to do that. So a couple things I changed. Um, I'll go into it more detail in the next video when we talk about software, but... Um, I stopped using a remote desktop and used a, a product from um, New Tech for ND, called NDI. And I changed from Streamlabs OBS to the OBS project, which is what Streamlabs is actually bases their product off of. Um, Streamlabs is great to get started, but OBS used a lot less CPU, so you know that's why I went there. I will say, I do think Streamlabs is solving some of that, and they do have a lot of different add-ons that... I don't really have in OBS, but there are a couple things we'll talk about in the next video which really uh, amp up my, uh, my abilities to move beyond just streaming and video recording and go into the virtual meeting space. With that, let's start talking about my current streaming setup. We're going to break this down into some categories, but we're going to start from what I would consider the most important updates to make up front. Luckily, I was able to make all these at one time, but if you can't do that or you're like, ah, 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 slowly upgrade that. So so the first major category is audio. Now, why, why audio, not camera, not video? Because most of the time people are going to be listening to you. They may have the video off to the side. They may be detached a little bit from that, but they're still listening. And so they will tolerate a little fuzziness in your video, maybe a little out of sync lips in your video because the real content they're getting most of the time is coming from what you're saying, what's coming out of your mouth. So if it's, it's, if it's bad, if it's too loud, if it sounds like you're in a hall and it's echoing everywhere, it, they're not going to stick around for very long. So focus on audio. So when I upgraded my audio setup, I went from the Blue Yeti to the Rode Pod mic, an XLR mic. And what that means is I'm getting the actual audio signal coming directly from the mic into my mixer. Now, I said we're coming out with an XLR. 
our last mic was a USB, went directly into our PC, so we had to take that XLR audio signal into something. Um, and that's where usually a mixer or a, um, an EQ of some kind comes in. Again, not an audio file, not a video file. I'm a guy that knows enough to, make, to get into trouble. Um, but I learned a lot. So I went and got something that was simple and easy to use for someone who's not an audiophile. That is the Go XLR mixer there. The Go XLR Mini actually will take in my microphone. It allows me to adjust the, the audio a little bit, but it also gives me a lot more control over the sounds in my system. So remember, one of the things I talked about why I wanted to upgrade my stream was to bring on guests. When I would bring on guests in the past, they could only hear my voice. Now I have my audio routed into this mixer. Now that mixer controls everything and I actually gives me a lot of virtual outputs inside my, my streaming PC that allows me to, to pick and choose which, to, which applications get which output and input. So I can actually have a lot more control of where my audio goes and it allows me to bring my guests more into the stream because they're hearing all this funny sound effects, the music that all the viewers and the streamers are hearing. The next thing I did was I actually went and bought me a, a shotgun mic, a mic that's actually out of screen. So in some of my previous videos, you'll notice I had this Rode Pod mic like right here in frame. And I didn't like that. I thought it would look more professional when I had that out of frame. And I had still sounded good. That's the key. I still wanted to sound good. Now those mics like the Rode Pod mic and the um, Yeti, they're meant to be a lot closer to you. Unlike the shotgun mic, which is a directional mic, meaning I point it at me, like this one's pointed right down at me right now, and so it's picking up in this cone, which is why if I move out of range, I, I start to sound a little echoey, because it's picking up it actually bouncing around. It's also very sensitive, so I do have to do a little more audio adjustment with it, but I think it's going to provide a better experience. Actually, let me know in the comments if you like this audio, versus the one from my other ones. I'm, I'm curious what you all think. Next, let's move on to lighting. So why not a camera first? Why not the, I know we talked about why not a camera first last time, but why not now? Um, because honestly, a, a good set of lights, a lighting setup can actually make a webcam look pretty good. Um, so I might actually venture to say you might invest in lighting a little earlier on um, even before going to a, an XLR type microphone setup. But lighting is definitely going to help you out. So what I ended up doing was I I could have gone with some other recommended LED lights, but Elgato champions as they are at streaming gear right now, caveat here, there are a lot of people out there that don't like some of the Elgato products. I've had nothing but good luck. A couple little glitches here and there, I, I think. But for the most part, the software, the hardware has is working great but your lighting so Elgato actually makes a set of what they call key lights they're not priced for the faint of heart um, I think they're running $1.99 each right now for the clampable ones that actually are on telescopic um, poles which can go up as high as you need them um, I have I have two of them um, and I have them on each corner and I will tell you the moment I put them up and turn them on and started filming and recording with it, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Blew my mind. Um, I thought my little light, my little face light here was, was acceptable enough. It's not. It's not, I promise you. Get you a good set of LED light panels that you can control maybe the, the softness or the, um, the brightness of them and, and get them set up in the corners. Pointing at, at actually got them pointing aim directly at my green screen and I'm catching some ambient light off of it. Now you gotta be saying, okay Ryan, now you gotta be ready to upgrade the camera. Not not just yet. Um, this next one is kind of a toss up. Um, you could either go with the, the PC or the, the camera system. I actually just upgraded the PC. Um, I didn't get one that had a great graphic card in it because I actually wanted something small and portable that I could carry with me. Um, I saw the recommendation of this Intel NUC, Canyon NUC, I think is what it is. And it is, oh my gosh, it's amazing. With the new PC, I'm actually able to process well enough to be able to put my output, my streams and videos at 1920 instead of the 720, which is what I was pushing with my old PC. 
so it's a much crisper stream a much high more high definition screen so if you put it up on a TV I'm gonna look pretty good I always look good don't I um, it's gonna look really good 720 you try to blow it up it's gonna start getting fuzzy and grainy now we're at the camera so now we're talking about upgrading our camera from the webcam the Logitech C920 um, which honestly actually I still use that was one of the other beauties with getting a better PC I can run two cameras now I've got the C920 running it's actually running off to the side it provides what I call the behind the scenes look the next thing I got was I got the Sony a5100 it's an entry-level DSLR camera now the price is, is a big jump honestly and unfortunately there's not kind of any middle ground with it you go directly from the C920 to the D DSLR um, it does make a huge difference because I'm actually outputting an amazing high-definition camera image plus I get full control over the focus the shutter speed the ISO it's much easier to control on these DSLR current DSLR cameras cameras like can't say cameras tonight now you might be saying DSLR isn't that one I see photographers are using yes yes you are you're seeing them use these high these fancy cameras and if you've got one of these you might be able to use it um, there are certain specifications you want for streaming that you don't necessarily need for recording so this is where we're gonna split a little bit so if you are talking for streaming you need to make sure the DSLR camera you're going to use provides a clean HDMI signal out of it um, that's going to give you the ability to have a, a clean image if, if you're wondering what I mean by clean image think of when you're looking through that LCD panel on the back of a lot of these they have all this information about it the like the frame rate the aperture settings the ISO settings um, do you have a memory card in it mine's blinking no card at me right now so that's why I say that those are all on that screen. A lot of cameras will output an HDMI signal, but it will include all of that with it. Now, on some of these cameras, you can make the adjustments to get it to where it's a minimal amount of information on there, and then you can use some cropping of your um, image coming out to get rid of that, but just find one that doesn't have it, and you don't have to worry about that. Um, there are a lot of cameras coming out. I went with the Sony Alpha line because that's actually what a lot of streamers and a lot of YouTubers have recommended. Now that you've got a camera that's producing clean HDMI out, you got to bring it into your PC so you can bring it into your stream or video like I'm doing. So you have to have a little device that sits in between your camera and the PC. And I'm using the Elgato Cam Link 4K. And that's taking my HDMI signal and making it a video source on my PC. Unfortunately, it's out online uh, there is a shortage of them I don't know if they're coming back I've not heard anything again I'm not an Elgato rep um, so there may be something new coming I know there were a couple product announcements but they are a little higher price than what this cam link was so hopefully the cam links coming back because it, it works really well now there is another option for you if you can't find a cam link 4k also do not go on eBay. They are price gouging these for hundreds of dollars, and you don't need to pay that. I promise. There are better ways to spend that money. Like with this guy right here. This is another Elgato product, but it's called the HD60S. Now, there's something called the HD60S Plus, which is just a new version of it, but it also outputs a, a much higher frame rate. So this is so this is a capture card with a pass-through. Unlike the Elgato Cam Link, which is not a pass-through. Um, what that means is that when the video signal coming in, it'll go in this side, um, it'll come out this side so I can go to a, a TV or a, another monitor or something. Um, we'll talk about how I'm using another version of this um, in just a second. So you could use this to take your camera input and put it in here because it does have actually a USB. Focus there. Uh, you can't get a good shot of it. It does have to take, has a USB out and going into your machine. So that is another option, and it is much cheaper than a lot of these price gouging things. Now, I talked about I had another one of these. So when we talk about a little bit of how I wanted to use my setup in the future, 
I needed to have it to be somewhat portable. So that's one reason why I originally had one of these. Um, but I'm using a different device now from um, Avermedia. It's very similar to this, but it actually outputs 4K, which you're like, well, maybe you don't, but you might. If you're running a high definition screen and you're going through this device right here, it's only going to pass through um, 1080p, I think. Um, it, it, not a high definition. If I have, if I'm able to output at 4K or a, a high resolution, I don't want a card. To, I want a device that'll do it. And that's what the Avermedia 2 Plus Live Gamer Portable is what I'm using. And actually, that's what's sitting in between my PC, my development PC, and my streaming PC. So now my my system is completely portable. I can take it anywhere, and I don't have to worry about a network that I don't own or control. Oh, and last but not least, get yourself a good set of head noise canceling headphones. Um, I picked up the uh, Microsoft Surface headphones. Um, yes, you might say you're using a lot of Microsoft products, Ryan, and a lot of um, Elgato products. Are you a fanboy? Yeah, yes, I am. Um, the Surface headphones are amazing. Um, they work great for non streaming. Um, you'll notice I actually have them wired here, um, although they have Bluetooth. I don't have a Bluetooth adapter hooked up to my mixer where I'm sending out a, a stream mix so I can hear everything. They also have great noise canceling, meaning I'm not going to be distracted by sounds outside of my room or anywhere else. You could say that's a good thing or a bad thing. Most of the days it's a good thing. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please leave comments down below. If you've got any question, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash developersgarage. There's a link down below. You can join me, ask me your questions there live. I'll answer them. Um, my streams are always an ask me anything, so don't fear of what I'm working on that you'll be interrupting. I like those kind of streams. I think it's very enjoyable. So thank you, and we'll see you in the chat.